Now, Syrian girl was once alleged to be a robot. In truth, she is such a dynamic young woman that she has begun to build a following all over the world. Syrian girl on Twitter is one of many people's first port of call for a contrary view to the prevailing orthodoxy, the prevailing Western narrative about events in Syria, in Lebanon, in the Middle East in general. I never miss or fail to retweet anything that she has ever written because I, for one, agree with it. Syrian girl is not a robot. She's Maram Suzli, and she's on Skype to talk to me and you right now. Maram, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to see you on a screen, a split screen, with me on the mother of all talk shows. Thank you very much for joining us. The pleasure is all mine. I've also been watching your tweets, and also ever since you know I was a teenager, I've been watching every activist uh, thing you've done, Galloway. So it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Shuk La shukra la wajib, as I always say. Uh, now, tell us this. The prevailing narrative here in this country is that the government in Damascus was the reason for many problems in the Middle East, from the uh, bad relations with our NATO ally Turkey uh, to the situation of Kurdish people uh, in Syria to the lack of democracy in Syria. That was the prevailing orthodoxy for many, many years uh, here. And that's why Western governments got away with funding and arming and propagandizing for the Al-Qaeda, ISIS, alphabet soup of uh, Islamist extremism, uh, which tried to destroy your country of Syria. That must be extremely frustrating for a Syrian like you that knows the truth. How have the last few years been for you in that regard? It's been a struggle, but I think it's that frustration that has driven me to try to educate as many people as I can about what's really happening. And, you know, it's, it's ironic that some of the same Al-Qaeda-linked groups that the U.S., the CIA, has been arming are now the ones attacking their Kurdish proxies in the northeast of Syria, um, which is, was very predictable. You know, the terrorists of the freedom fighters of today are always the terrorists of tomorrow, and they keep switching up this game. Um, so, you know, I, I would love to tell you guys about what's really happening over there now. Tell us. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Well, you know, if you've heard that Turkey is invading the northeast of Syria, and this is supposed to be uh, something that is new, but in, as a matter of fact, Turkey has already invaded the northwest of Syria, um, including Idlib province, which is under Al-Qaeda control, and Afrin, which uh, was a city that had a large population of Kurds. But you never heard like an, such an outcry about that invasion because the US and the EU supported it. They went along with Turkey's uh, entrance into uh, Menbej in op Operation Euphrates Shield, and that is because it didn't threaten their real objective in Syria, which is not really about the Kurds, it's about controlling Syria's resources in the northeast of the country, uh, the oil fields, in fact. And this is becoming more and more obvious, even with the statements just now by Lindsey Graham and by Trump, that at least they've secured the oil fields. Trump was very it's clear not, about that. We've secured the oil, he said. Indeed. But it's not from lack of oil. Like, the United States doesn't need that oil. What they really want is to deny Syria from possessing that oil so that they can be unable to rebuild or, or for, the, for the army to be unable to move. Because at the end of the day, this is not about oil. This is about protecting Israel. And Syria has always been a resistance country. It has never, ever uh, stopped supporting the Palestinian cause and never will. So, you know, now they're trying to apply the divide and conquer strategy on Syria. 
by um, trying to slice away the Northeast and they've been trying to create the Kurdistan. But the thing that people need to understand is that, you know, uh, there's this uh, theme that, you know, the the Kurdish autonomy is something that sometimes in, on the left is supported. But in the northeast of Syria, Kurds are not a majority. And it's not, not so much like a Palestinian cause, but far more like a second Israel in the region that they're trying to create. Of course, Kurdish people have rights and they have been denied in many places, not Syria, as much as across the border in Turkey. Uh, which has massacred Kurds on a huge scale whilst remaining a member of NATO and a candidate member of the European Union. Well, there is definitely a history of, uh, you know, Kurds being suppressed and, uh, you know, perhaps denied uh, civil rights as well as citizenship rights. That is uh, historically very accurate. But as we also know, uh, the Israel was built on a mythology of victimhood. And we are seeing the same people sell us the same uh, line to, in order to create Kurdistan when, you know, as a matter of fact, in a lot of ways, it's, it's just like a second Israel. For example, you know, they want to take the, res they want to build an ethno state. They want to build it uh, whilst denying the majority of people the minority of uh, and giving the majority of people the resources for those majority to a minority of people, which is exactly what happened with Israel. And not only that, but in regions where the the eth the indigenous ethnic people of that land are being denied their history, and that history is stolen. For example, the Assyrian people of North uh, Iraq and of Northeast Syria um, are being denied their historical claims to the areas that they live in by the Kurdish autonomous nationalist movement that the left is supporting. They're having the, the names of their cities changed. Ain al-Arab to Qobani, Qamishli to Qamishlo. They're being pushed off their land. They're, they're being disarmed, the militias. Um, I mean, this is another Israel in the sense that it's, in order to create this ethno state called Kurdistan in Syria and North Iraq, What's, what has had to happen is the ethnic cleansing of other minorities that happen not to be Kurdish, such as the Assyrian Christians and Arabs. So um, that is what we have been fighting now. And of course, you know, the same individuals that sold us Israel, Noam Chomsky, Bernie Sanders, you know, these people that were in kibbutz when they were young, sold us Israel with the same idea that it was going to be a socialist democratic nation. And as a matter of fact, it's once again an ethnostate supported by empire, because that's what the empire always does. They balkanize the Middle East and tries to divide them based on ethnicity or religion. And, and this is no different at all. Um, if you looked at the history of the Kurdish people, you know, the reason why Sykes-Picot did not grant them a state is because historically, since World War I, they have always been nomadic. And as a result, they never built a city or, um, you know, had some settlements that they could say, well, this is, you know, Kurdistan. That is why they never had a nation state. But now they want to, you know, um, carve out what used to be Armenia, Assyria and Syria into to creating one. Um, and that's why Israel is so supportive of that, because they agree, they wholeheartedly agree that this would be a second Israel in the region. Um, and not to mention the fact that, you know, the east of Turkey, as much as Turkey has punished the Kurdish people, uh, they, at the same time, you know, the Kurdish people, well, not the people as a whole, but Kurds did participate in the Armenian genocide and ethnically cleansed much of northeast, uh, uh, sorry, of east Turkey. So, you know, this victimhood story, it, it, this, uh, you know, they have to have a nation state here and, uh, let's create an ethnic majority here. And the whole idea of Arabs shouldn't be allowed to move into northeast Syria because that would threaten the demography. Like, it is all a second Israel. The, the situation is that the Syrian people own all of Syria. You know, it belongs to all of Syrians. So whether you're a Kurdish or Arab or a Syrian, you should be able to live in any region of Syria and there should be no partition. 
the oil belongs to every Syrian. And the, the, the most awful part is, even the Kurdish militias right this very moment are willing to give up territory to Turkey where Kurds live, not to protect them, but because the US has promised them a stake in the oil fields. And so the only hope at the moment to protect the, the uh, ethnic groups in the northeast of Syria is the Syrian army. They're the only ones who actually care. Maram, uh, I've got quite a lot of calls coming in, so stay on the line and help me uh, answer the callers, if you will. Alan is in London. Alan, welcome. Hi, hello. Yes, go ahead. How's it going? Yes, good, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. For, thank you. For being here. Yeah, I just want to say um, to the Syrian girl, like, I'm Kurdish, and I personally want Syria to be united right now, I do not want another Iraqi Kurdistan because I think one is more, more, more than, than enough and she is correct in, in, in the past. Uh, we have taken, taken part in, 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 in crimes, you know, in, 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 in massacres, just as many people also have done in, in, in our past, we have done so. so I myself have no interest in creating another Kurdistan. But what I want to say is in Syria right now, I think that um, it's important to know that the Kurds who have been there have done a lot of decent stuff in a way. For example, when they did fight against ISIS, they did spend more than two years they were the force fighting back jihadis as opposed to any other force. They also were sealing the border to prevent more jihadis flowing through from other places. And I personally would like, I would very much want the Syrian government to take over the regions that the Kurdish people have right now in terms of Asti, the whole coalition of the, the SDF, which has got some Arabs as well and, and Kurdish forces and, and Arab forces. I want the Syrian government now to take over those places because personally, as a Kurd, I would rather see this war end. And a lot of places, the Kurds, they have made that choice in Mambij, in Kobani, in Karmishli, even in parts of Raqqa, in, um, in many places, in Haska governance and stuff, the Kurds have decided, they said, no, we'll make the deal with the Syrian government instead of allowing Turkey to occupy these places. Okay, so Alan, uh, thanks uh, very much for that. Max is in Surrey. He served as a soldier in Syria. Let's hear that one. Max. Yeah, hi, uh, hi, chaps. Uh, and uh, oh, George wants to say, great for calling out David Lammy about his expenses. But uh, thank you. <laughs> Especially his season yeah, ticket for Tottenham Hotspur. Oh, absolutely. The taxpayer no, paying for I wish the taxpayer had paid my season ticket at Celtic Park oh, well, for 20 perfect. years. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just want to say, so um, I'm an army officer and I have served in Syria uh, a few years ago uh, as an advisor. Uh, but I want, to, I want to say thank you to Syrian Girl because you were actually painting a more accurate narrative. Um, but what I wanted to say was... If you, I mean, Assad himself, he's an Alawite, which is a, a, a yeah. branch of Shia Islam. Uh, most of his troops are Sunni. So the idea that this kind of everyone hates Assad is completely wrong, as, as Syrian girls correctly stated all the time. One of the other things I wanted to mention, how when I was out, that honor is very important among the, in the Middle East as a, as a cultural factor. And one of the things people are forgetting is the Kurds allied with Israel they made a promise to Israel to, to weaken the South, and in return, Israel will support their, their claim to have their own state. But then Israel turned their backs on them, and no, nothing happened. There was no outcry in the media. But as soon as Syrian government correctly pointed out, as soon as Turkey invades the North, the media is completely upset about this. Yeah, so, and, uh, mean, uh, of course, Max, the very jihadists that are the vanguard of the Turkish invasion are the very people that we have been uh, describing as moderate opposition and giving them guns and money, am I right? Absolutely. So one of the biggest problems we had out there was the fact that when you were encounter encountering these uh, fundamentalist people, they weren't running around with bad quality Kalashnikov. They had 
American weapons, which were very, very effective at what they do. And we found that a problem. So it, it just, it was bizarre that these extremists who live in the desert had M16s and American tanks. I think that's a brilliant that's call, uh, Max, a really brilliant call. Uh, only for the hour, I must uh, ask Maram to uh, respond and to uh, Adam Bray any further points she'd like to do before we lose the line. Maram, go ahead. The floor is yours again. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, w the callers are right. You know, Kurds are a uh, Syrian Kurds who have Syrian citizenship are every part of Syrian society and should be so. And of course, you know, uh, people who are resisting the occupation of their country, whether they be Kurdish or any other ethnicity, that is something that I greatly respect. And their honor is very important in our region. And it's not just the fact that they were collaborating with Israel. Uh, so the, the, the Kurdish militias do not represent all Kurds. And they haven't been helpful to certainly Syrian Kurds in the northwest of Syria. So if, you know, it's, it is about honor. So what, where is the honor in collaborating with not only Israel, but the US and UK occupation of your own country and allowing them to take over the oil resources and while you're, the rest of the country starve with a fuel shortage. You know, what is the honor of assassinating uh, people who are fighting ISIS, like the Assyrian militias, um, or forcibly disarming them because they don't agree with your separatist agenda? So this is not loyalty, this is not honor. And I don't think it represents Syrian Kurds, as your caller said. You know, people are loyal to their country, and we shouldn't just brush them all with this SDF or YPG stroke. And I hope I have not, haven't run out of time. No, no, you haven't. And I want to ask you one last question. Uh, not that many years ago, uh, I was sat in Beirut, uh, and there was, uh, unlike when I first went there in the 1970s, uh, relative calm. There's no calm in Beirut this evening. What's going on in Lebanon? You know, actually, it is uh, a bit of a confusion for everyone at the moment. It, there was a WhatsApp law introduced where they wanted to tax WhatsApp, and I believe it was uh, introduced by Hariri's government. And this is a, a corruption that has been, you know, rampant in Lebanon, and people have been sick of it. The only risk is that some nefarious uh, forces are going to try to exploit legitimate grievances inside Lebanon. And you can already kind of see that in the Western media, trying to make this about, uh, you know, Hezbollah, people being against Hezbollah or uh, Amal, etc., etc. You know, but at the end of the day, this is uh, against corruption, but we'll have to see where it goes from here. I'm deeply grateful to you for your appearance this evening, but especially for your presence on social media, which has frankly uh, done more uh, to counter the hostile narrative than any official source uh, from Damascus. You have perfectly crystallized the case of the Syrian nationalists, the Syrian resistance to uh, hegemony in the area, resistance to imperial domination and interference and so on. How did you get into all of this? Actually, you know, I've been an anti-war activist. I was, uh, since I was a teenager, I opposed the Iraq war. And I watched you, uh, you know, give your testimony in front of the United States and you smoked your cigar. And I, you know, I was there from the beginning. And so this, I always knew that it would come to Syria eventually. And that's when I chose to be a public person. And I had my first interview with a small YouTuber called Morris108, who unfortunately passed away recently. But um, uh, thank you so much. Like, I don't really, I don't like to make it about me. I'm just a person, just a girl in her room. You know, I just, I want the truth to be told. And, uh, you know, the, 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 at the end of the day, this is about resistance. This is about Palestine and the occupations of our nations and the death of people. And unfortunately, this is, you know, something that affects the entire world. And I just hope that I can be a little bit of truth out there. It's, uh, it's not about you, about Syria and its people are lucky to have you. How do people follow you? You are 
uh, Syrian girl, is it Partisan Girl on Twitter? Where else can people uh, watch and listen to you? Sure. Um, I have a YouTube channel, Syrian Girl Partisan, and I have a Facebook, which is uh, Partisan Girl as well, I believe. I'm working on a website, but I haven't made it yet. Well, let so. us know when you do, and we'll uh, promote it uh, on here. I'm very proud of you, Maram. Really, sincerely, Thanks. very proud of you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on the mother of all talk shows.